into the Marohor, dedicated to Mongolian culture, uh, to the Marohor, to its melodies and, and, and all that. Uh, it's been super long time since uh, I didn't get into a live with you guys. So I'm a little bit nervous today as it's kind of like getting back to, to, to the show. Um, today, it's going to be a pretty buzzy live um, as I will answer one uh, multiple request that came from many person, uh, which is to share with you the Chinggis Hani Maktar. Uh, hello, Bjorn. How are you? Thanks for joining. So basically, I will I will just detail a little bit what we're gonna do today in today's live. So we will talk about, uh, of course, the Chinggis Hani Maktal. I will not get too deep uh, into the lyrics or the singing because my part, if I would say, uh, is more the the, the melody part, the murder part. But I will try to give you as much information as possible about this Chinggis Hani Maktal, the few uh, version that exists, and, and we will see that on the Murder uh, together. Then after that, we might do, we will see how long time uh, we will get into this Chinggis Hani Maktal. And uh, after that, we will get into maybe Urtindo uh, practice as it's been a while. Maybe some of you want to, to have one practice like that. We will see. And I will give you some few other uh, information. So I see on the chat that uh, there is quite a bunch of people that came here. So hello, Blaviken. Hello, Magne. Uh, hello, Magnus. How are you? Uh, Platonic Omerist, how are you? Very glad that you are joining here. Onal is there too. That's really great. And Matthews is also great. So, so I'm, I'm super glad. I'm super glad that uh, you guys all joined uh, to, today. So, well, let's get, let's get started. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Oh my God, why? <clears throat> So as you can see, I'm already uh, tuned in fifth to get uh, into the Chinggis Hani Maktal. So I will just play uh, the first paragraph for you guys just to, uh, how to say, refresh. Uh, I, I know you all know what is that melody, so I will just refresh that for you now. That's just uh, the first paragraph of this Chinggis Hani Maktal, just to refresh a little bit uh, the, the melody and so on. So before we get into the practice, I have some information to give you about uh, this Maktal. As you know, I like to share a bunch of info before uh, getting into a song. So first of all, uh, you need to know guys that this piece is not a traditional piece at all. Uh, it was composed, I, I took note actually, and I talked with the person uh, who composed this maktal uh, to get to be sure to get the right information. 
So it was composed in 1993, and uh, it was composed by Munkbat Jamstranjau. He composed the melody, and the words uh, were written, composed by uh, Zirindorch Tseyin. So that's a piece that was composed in, in uh, 93, and it was actually uh, performed the first time that year during a national uh, competition for the Maktarch and Yerurch. So Maktarch is the, 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 the praise, the Maktarch is the praise, and the Yerurch is uh, the, the blessing. So it was performed uh, that in that time, and uh, it's on an album actually, which is called uh, Black Horse. Uh, that you can find on YouTube. So I will put after the live, I will put the, all the links and information are uh, in the description and I will make an entry also on my website, on the blog. So you can, uh, you will be able to, to get on the blog and have every links uh, that I will talk about in the live. So it, it's, uh, I, I will try to share a lot of information uh, today. I have few surprise a little bit later uh, also on that subject. So I talked uh, with Mokbat actually to get the, the right lyrics, uh, to get the, the, the little uh, story that goes around this Maktash. So as I was saying, it was, it, it was composed uh, in 1993. So it's a modern compos composition. It's not traditional, uh, even though it, it sounds kind of very traditional. Um, we can here, the original version, as I said, on the Black Horse uh, album, which is uh, on YouTube. And for the little story, this album uh, was uh, the album of the band of Mukhbat, which was with his wife. Um, so as they might have been only the two, maybe Mukhbat uh, recorded multiple uh, layer of the recording, like maybe the murhur, then the singing, then uh, the tofshur, maybe a second voice on the murhur or, or, or so on. And uh, this album was recorded in Holland. So <laughs> that's super interesting. This album is very, very nice uh, because there is many different kinds of music on it. The first song is Chinggis Hani Maktash. Uh, I didn't wrote all the list here, but there is also two other maktas that were composed by Mukbat uh, Jans Anjou. There is the Tehi Maktas and the Zurhan Tumen Mongol. Those three, so Chinggis Hani Maktas, Tehi Maktas and Zurhan Tumen Mongol, the, the three pieces are super, super, super awesome. So I will uh, definitely put the link in the description so you can uh, listen to it and discover and all that. So I got the lyrics from Munkbat. Uh, I had already some lyrics, but there were some little mistakes. So I will put the lyrics that I got directly from the person who composed the song uh, in the description and in the blog. So you will have the, 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 the real, if I can say, the original lyrics of the song. Um, and on this CD, just to finish about that, on this CD, there is also different kind of pieces. Some are a little bit more modern. Some are European composition. There is Urtindo, there is some Tatlak. So it's a little bit of potpourri uh, of many different kind of pieces. So, so yeah, I, I just wanted to, to give you the information because now this Maktad is very well known, mostly because of Batsorik but he's not the original composer. Uh, it's not an original uh, traditional piece. So I think that it's very important to, to know, uh, even though Badzorik is singing super great and this version on the mountain is so awesome, there is nothing to talk about, like it's so great, but it's also interesting and important, I think, to know where this song is coming from. Uh, especially as the composer is still the 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 both the Tserendorj and Mukbat they are both alive right now so I think it's important to give them credit uh, for this very very amazing piece. So now that it that uh, this is being said, we can start to get into the the the, the practice of the song directly. Um, I will 
just again as a as a little introduction or, or what the version of Munchpat uh, and the version of Batsorik, the two versions are slightly different. Uh, so I, I wrote down kind of, uh, so I, I might put a picture of that on the blog also, so you will have the detail um, directly because on the chat, on the live, that's not going to be very um, visible. So the structure of the version of Mungbat, the original version, is a little bit different from the one of Batsorik. And Batsorik, he added some uh, improvisation of Homi, which are not uh, in the original version. And he also added, um, how to say, added a bridge in the, in the, in the half uh, of the, of the, um, how to say, of the, the song. So we will see every single detail uh, now. Also, I will give you, because I, I practiced a little bit, I, I actually, I started learning that song a week or two weeks ago. So I, I'm a little bit, uh, I was a little bit nervous to sing and, and play now. Uh, but I also have some ornamentation that I like to do that Batsorik didn't really do. Uh, and that kind of mimic what uh, Munkpat did on his album with the Tofshur. So I will show you all that. And uh, and yeah, I, f I think that that's it. So maybe if there is, before I get into uh, the, 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 the lesson, if I could say lesson, if you want to interact a little bit on the, on the chat, uh, if you have any requests or anything before I get into the instrument, because once I will start with the with the Merhur, I will not check the chat too much. So let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There is a lot of action there. So let's see. I'd like the Urtindo practice. Okay, we will do some Urtindo after that. Um, okay, Mario Lix there was still alive up for Urtindo practice too. <laughs> okay. Like a contest of praise and praising it sounds so epic. Yeah, the, the actually the 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 competition of blessings and praise happened. I think it's almost every year there is some kind of event, and it's uh, it's yeah it's like super 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 great. Okay, so I guess that you are all crazy with your motorhome right now, and you want to get into the playing. So let's get started. I will put that down a little bit, but well, we only need uh, this part anyway. So. So first we can get uh, into the tuning. So as you know, this maktad is played in uh, fifth and not in quart, uh, not in fourth. So we'll tune first. So here is for this string, uh, the outer string. That, that should be okay for the lower string. Now the higher strings, so this one. should give you this tuning. So nice. <laughs> okay. 
So I will play it, uh, play this melody. Uh, so there is intro, four line for the paragraph. So I, 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 I wrote paragraph one, two, three, four. Then there is, there is a kind of a bridge. Uh, and then there is the chorus. So we will see each part uh, one by one. So I will play all that uh, one time without the, power, without the lyrics. So now that I'm not singing it, uh, you might have uh, see, see that I'm not exactly perfectly the same as I was uh, during the singing. So you, you can kind of change a little bit uh, the number of bow uh, that, you, that you are using, uh, depending on how you will sing on it. Uh, you can take maybe a longer time on some, uh, I would say, on some part of the melody, kind of like a breathing. Uh, you can also add some little decoration, little ornament uh, there and there. Of course, uh, as we saw already in the Urtindo practice, the main melody needs uh, to stay the same, but the same principle uh, kind of applies to the maktal. Um, we keep the, the main, the core melody, but for example, if we compare the Munkpat version and the Batsolik version, uh, there is some syllable where Munkpat is holding them. He, he kind of like uh, make a, a long way on it. And Batsolik, he cuts straight and go to the, to the next uh, line directly. So um, what I want to share now, it's not, a, a strict version like you need to play exactly for example four bow and then six and then needs to have this ornament here and all that uh, what i want is more to give you um, a toolkit uh, with the different variation that there can be for this uh, song and then you can just grab whatever you like and whatever is kind of suitable with how you sing it uh, maybe you sing with Homi, maybe we, you sing uh, with a normal voice. And then you just mix it up and make kind of your, your own version. So now let's get into the introduction. <laughs> So I will play it uh, maybe two time uh, very slowly so you can kind of get to see uh, the, and hear the note precisely. So we start at the octave. Some start directly on the octave and some start with an empty string first and then goes to the octave uh, after. So we will see the two variation. So first we start with the empty bow and then we go there.
What is important is uh, this little uh, finger, which gives kind of like this mood, this temper. So for that, you can practice it like that, maybe on the different uh, positions. So for example, here, That can be a way, uh, if you don't have this little ornament yet in terms of skills, that's a way for you to practice it. Now, if we play it for real. That's one uh, version that you, you can play. You can also go directly on the octave like that. Directly. So. For the intro, that's kind of the different note that you will need. There is also in the Batsodic version a little uh, ornament that comes here. So I will play it now uh, in a normal speed. <laughs> The first version was the Munchbach version. Now the second version on this note, Batsodic tend to stay a little bit on it and then do this uh, little ornament. If I play it in, in slow motion, that's kind of this. I think that I kind of talk about all the different uh, things for the, the two variation of the intro. Uh, as you can see, that's not really a proper lesson. It's more like a toolkit that I want to give you to help you kind of analyze the different uh, ornament, the different notes, uh, more, like, more like that. So I, I hope that it's, uh, it's uh, nice, um, it's interesting for you. Uh, it may be more interesting that just like follow the rule uh, strictly like that. So I will just check uh, in the chat if there is some question about this part. Um, so Bjorn is asking, is it better to have a longer nail for that? So for this um, little ornament, actually for me, I think that with a longer nail, 
the sound is a little bit more interesting and the sound tend to be a little bit more sharp, uh, more present. So I would tend that, I would say that you don't, you must not have the nail, but if you have it, it will influence the sound. And in my opinion, it influenced the sound quite nicely. So I would say if you can keep a little bit of nail, that would be nice. Also, it helps uh, having a bit of stability when you find a note, when you play. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would tend to say having the nail is, is cool. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, the, the guitarist, they, they keep the nail longer to, to have the speed and, and so they don't need to have a, a pick or whatever. So it's a little bit like that. So I would say, yeah, the nail is helping and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, Stanik Prico, hello, welcome. Uh, will there be a record? Actually, the live is recorded. So once the live is finished, uh, you will be able to get back to it on YouTube. It will, it will take uh, maybe an hour or two for YouTube to process the live and then you will be able to, to see it again and again. I will put some chapter and put some information in the description. So, so yep. Open-ended guides are the best guides okay so i hope that this way of sharing the music is good for you um yeah okay so now that we saw uh, the intro we can get back uh, we can move forward to the the paragraph the lyrics part so so we finished with this Ah, yes, I'm just thinking. Actually, uh, for this part... For me, that's my version, if I, if I could say. Uh, I like to, instead of having four bow, four bows, four bows, so, sorry, I like to, to have only two and make the, the accent on the bow. Because I don't know, for me, the, this part is kind of like a, um, a push to the, the action that will come. So instead of playing it like that, I like to play it like that. You can take that or you can uh, throw it away if you don't like. For me, I like to play it like that because it's kind of like making um, a nuance that I find pretty interesting. Um, it's kind of like giving a moment of peace before like we take action again uh, before the lyrics. So that's why I, I like to, to play it like that. So if, um, if I play it kind of uh, in a slow motion, that would be like this. So again. Again, one time. That's a little bit uh, a little difference that I I I do uh, compared to Mungpat and Batsorik, but I feel that it gives a, an interesting uh, nuance to the rhythm, to the to the to the melody. So I, I thought that I could suggest uh, I, I could suggest it for you. So now we can move forward uh, for the lyric for the lyrics part. So I will just get back into uh, the introduction. <laughs> okay, just to put my, my brain again on that. So now the Maybe the two first line of the singing part. Oh. So 
here. Um, okay, I will play a few times a little bit slowly like that, so you can kind of get into it, and then I will uh, explain the little, little detail that goes there. <laughs> So if I get uh, into the, the little detail, that's very hard for me to play it slowly like that. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I hope that you enjoyed the, the live today. It's a little bit uh, upside down somehow. I don't know. So. Detail each um, ornament now. So very slow slide. And some tend to go back uh, to do kind of two slide like that. But I don't do that. Uh, because then it avoid uh, it's gonna be complicated to do the kind of tough shoe uh, ornament on the metal which I really like. Uh, so this kind of tough shoe ornament, which you can hear in the Black Horse version, is like that. <laughs> Because on the tough shore, on the side, kind of like there is the murderer playing uh, and the tough shore playing. And on the tough shore, there is this little ornament that comes. And I find it very, very rich. And I find that it really adds something uh, interesting and more than just... Uh, more than just using the, the, the simple ornament. So to, to do this ornament... the idea but you need to do it uh, in a very very abrupt and very very quick uh, quick way kind of so that's a little bit uh, strange for me to play it uh, slowly because I'm very used to always play it fast so if I play it one time in normal speed uh, and then uh, in slow speed just to make a comparison that would give us like that <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And now in kind of slow motion. second part uh, you have another very similar ornament
So that's for uh, the two first line of the paragraph. And the only difference uh, you will have between the Munkpad version and the Batzorik version is that uh, Batzorik cut the, the second line um, a little bit short, a little bit shorter uh, than the version of Munkpad. Uh, but the rest is very similar. And this kind of little decoration, that's uh, what I could hear from the tough short part, which I added uh, on the metal part. So you can use it or not. Again, that's very up to you. So I don't know if there is uh, questions on this uh, part. I hope that these uh, tips kind of all these advice are being uh, useful and that uh, it helps you understand better how this melody uh, works on the motherboard so i don't know if there is a question uh it's more interesting in this way okay so i'm 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 very glad um well platonic homerist is saying i'm not at the level uh to play this yet but uh, even if you, you cannot play at this level yet, uh, it's still interesting, I guess, to have an, uh, an overview of what's, uh, what's going to come in the future. Maybe you can just take it very slowly, very easily to implement all these little details uh, in your daily practice. Even if it's just five minutes, you know, to practice this or, or this ornament or whatever it's always going to help uh, for the future. So there is, we all started at the, at the level zero, you know, so, so it's all good. And uh, Mathieu, Papi, thank you for sharing your art and passion so well. Uh, je suis fier de savoir que tu es un compatriote. <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot. I'm very glad. I have a very supporting uh, word from a French compatriot. That's very great. So uh, if you're watching this live, feel free to, if you like this live also, feel free to put a thumb up uh, and to subscribe on, on the, sh the channel if you didn't do so yet. Also give me some feedback on how you like the live uh, form right now, how you like this method or not really a method or more like um, this way of sharing the, the, the music or the melody. Uh, I must admit that when I learned kind of the, the B or some Mahtad or some stuff like that, when I met some Mongolian, it's, it's kind of like that, you know. Um, they play the song once and sometimes just give some advice or insight on some ornament and stuff. It's not strict. It's not like a, a European music. It's not like um, a composition, modern composition. It's very freestyle. It's a lot of, you know, your own feeling, your own um, mood and, and what you want to express and all that. It's not a cage, you know, it's very it's very open. So that's why I want to share it um, not in a box, you know, more like a toolkit. I like this idea of toolkit. So, so, so yeah, I, I, as you can, I will put the chapter, then you can go back and move from one chapter to another and make your own kind of research or study or exploration and have the recording on the side and compare by yourself. So I really want to, to inspire people to not just take something already done and, and make a copy past, you know, that's not really how Mongolian music and Mongolian culture works. It's a lot of insight, you know, it's, it's like, even we have this example of the Jonan Tatlak, I'm just making a small part, a small, uh, I would say, uh, whatever, um, about the Jonan, you know, the Jonan Tatlak. Uh, there is million version of this Tatlak because even though when we hear it, we know it's a Jonan, it's Jonan Tatlak. Every person plays it a little bit differently, a little bit faster, a little bit slower, 
uh, with some part that are stretched, some part that are totally uh, thrown away, some that are added. So that's really what makes the Merhor and the Mongolian music alive. So you don't have to stay in a cage, in a, in a very narrow box. Uh, just keep the essence of the music, the essence of the piece, and then it needs to get inside you and then you can express yourself, you know. So um, as we see with this example, Chinggis Hani Maktal, uh, the, the version, the original version of Munkpat and the version of Patsorik, even though, of course, they're super similar, but still, there is some little uh, details that are in the Munkpat version that are not in the Batsorik one and vice versa. Some things are in the Batsorik version that are not in the version of Munkpat. So that's really what makes the music super rich. So now we can move to uh, the, the, the third and fourth uh, line of the paragraph. So I need to, to, to play it again to remember. So third and fourth uh, line. So again, one, two time a little bit slowly so you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, sorry. a little emphasis on something that I like to do and um, that kind of uh, relates also a little bit to the Urtindo. That's to put an accent on the bow and to make an accent also uh, on the string. So kind of double accent. So that would be something like that. When you take the when you take the the note, you can add a little uh, hammering, if I if I could say, to um, to boost a little bit this this note. And when you change the bow uh, with the accent, you can also make this hammering. So either with uh, the the fourth finger, or if you don't play a note. Uh, it can be directly with the the, the finger. I, I think that we saw this uh, this effect uh, in a previous live. I, I think we did. So or that's kind of a, a little, little practice that you can use to to make it work. That's kind of the little trick and advice uh, that you can use on this part. So 
again, maybe one or two times. a way uh, to play it also maybe you saw on on this time that you can also uh, kind of like I don't know how to say uh, push the string uh, when you take off from the string to add again a little bit of accent to add a little bit of dynamic on your playing uh, so that would be something like that that you can simply practice like that and when you take off the string to add a little bit of dynamic that's something that you can use so I think that on this uh, part I kind of talk talked about every little detail again I hope that it's helpful uh, that's not really a conventional lesson, as you can see, but that's kind of my style, I would say. I keep the conventional version for the show, but in the live, I want to be a little bit freestyle. And if you have questions or if you want me to explain something in detail uh, that I already talked, but you want to have more detailed explanation, just write in the chat. Just ask and how do you do this thing or whatever. I can get back to it uh, with pleasure. I'm really happy to share the little things that I know. So now we saw the introduction. I will take the map again, which I'm not really following anyway, but just uh, so we saw uh, the introduction. We saw the first and second line. We saw the third and fourth um, line. And now we can see the bridge. So just as a matter of information, this map, uh, the, 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 the point, the dot, are the archer, the bowing. Uh, this follows strictly the Mukhbat version. As I just started to practice and, and check this song like a week ago or something, um, I'm not able to follow strictly this version that's why the practice is a little bit freestyle right now um, but when i will put this picture you can be strict and follow uh, this map uh, perfectly because it's exactly what is played by Munkpat in the original version so now we can uh, go to the bridge <laughs> simple there is not uh, there isn't really any new things uh, in this part so I will just play it two times two or three times very slowly
maybe now there is a little part that is a little bit quick. Maybe I can do a stretch slow motion uh, on it. Oh. That's for uh, the bridge part. Um, there isn't much difference, I think, from the Mukhbat version and the Batistolic version. So if you play it kind of like that, you're going to be good to go. And now we can see the chorus, the final part uh, for this Chinggis Hani Maktash. So. <laughs> two or three times uh, slowly. What I like to do with, uh, with that is to enter the, 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 the note with a little slide and a little bit of also like an energetic slide, kind of. A little bit what we have in the real beginning, in the real intro that we, that we play. You see? It's not just like, it's a little bit energetic. Again, it's about dynamic and nuance and, and all that. So I like to, to use it uh, here. So it's a little bit similar to what uh, we have here. I don't make the slide. I find it a little bit dual, you know. If there is a slide, a little bit of slide, I think that it gives again a little bit more of dynamic um, and, and mood and energy. Uh, again, this Maktal is very energetic somehow. Um, a lot of people really love this melody. And I think that as we are talking about Chinggis Khan, we're not talking about just uh, any person. It, I think that putting a bit more of ornamentation and strength and you know this, we are in Mongolia, there is the herd of horses and the warrior going and so on. So I think that putting more accent on the bow and accentuating kind of the bow with this kind of little slide and stuff really make the sound, the sound, the song a little bit more like powerful somehow. So I like to, to do like that, but you, you don't have to do it. You can do it uh, with directly playing the note, uh, just like a suggestion, I would say. <laughs> Be careful not to catch the the note that we use for the lyrics. Uh, we are a little bit higher here, so not this one. So not this one. A little bit higher. So 
I think that we saw every single part uh, of the of the of the song right now. There is something that Batzorik actually uh, made, kind of created in his version. That's kind of like a bridge. Uh, I think that he plays that after the second paragraph or after the third one, and then he played the chorus again or something like that. That's uh, this part. Oh, sorry. So we can see uh, maybe this part. Uh, so we will really have seen everything. Uh, we can go in this part also quite slowly. You see, it's very easy. It's basically the note that you use in the intro. Basically, that's the note of the intro played in the opposite way. So you, you should already have the notes. So instead of playing from the octave, you will go uh, down to the upper bridge. Uh, instead of going from the octave to the upper bridge, you will go from the upper bridge to the octave, sorry. So very slowly. God, sorry. Again, <laughs> that's the live. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm going to freestyle. <laughs> I need to put structure in my in my head a little bit, sorry. time is played by Batzorik uh, in his Chinggis Hani Maktab version, uh, kind of in the middle of the song. So you see that's quite easy. Uh, that's not too complicated. Uh, if I play it kind of like normal speed, that should be something like that. Hey. <laughs>
just thinking uh, about something. Um, now I just showed you for the for the paragraph for this part. <laughs> second string actually Bazzoriki play everything on the lower string so that would be something like that Another way to play it. Uh, personally, I'm not too fan of it um, because usually, I don't know, it, the melody tend to be a little bit uh, disappearing. Um, I don't know. I like I like it better to play here. <laughs> Why I like it better uh, on this version, it's because the bass string is playing the bass note. Um, so it gives more, in my opinion, in my taste, it gives more like a uh, wide wideness to the sound. Uh, kind of like the, this uh, homey, we like to have this very low bass uh, going with the harmonic. So I like it better to play with the second string here uh, to keep this bottom kind of this lower note always like, you know, growling kind of. Uh, if we play it there, then the, the growl disappear kind of this not disappear and this not become the bourdon and the base uh, of the of the melody so i don't know i like it better uh, to play it with the second string maybe it's easier actually to play with only one string um, but i find it a little bit less interesting the thing is, um, as Batsorik is playing, uh, is singing with the Carrera, with the Harrera, um, maybe that's why he made that choice. I, I don't know. Uh, so maybe it depends on the tuning of your instrument, of your voice. Maybe if you play the Batsorik version on the lower string only, that would uh, sound better. Or maybe if you want a little bit of dynamic again, a little bit more nuance, and to keep this low uh, note growling all the way, then you can use uh, the version that I showed you. From what I could hear in the Black Horse CD of Munchbat, I think that he plays this version because the growling is always there. So, so I think that's it for this how to play Chinggis Hani Maktat video uh, for those who are in the live uh, you can if you have any question if you have any things that you need to know about this song if you need more details about something please let me know in the chat um, and i will be very glad to share it with you i will just check um, if there is some question in the chat and I will share with you also some other information uh, about this song. So I don't think there is any 
request of more uh, information for the song right now. What I would like to share with you is um, another channel, another YouTube uh, made, created by my first teacher, Budje. She's sharing a uh, Mongol folk song. So she created a playlist uh, called Sharing Mongol Folk Songs. It's for all musicians, not just for Murhurch. And she teach uh, very strictly with the score, with the notes. She also gives the spelling, how to say the words in Mongolian of this Chinggis Hani Maktar. Um, so I will put the, the link of her playlist in the description. I will put it on the blog also. So far, she shared, uh, she made, she created around a dozen of lesson of Mongolian, of Mongol folk song. There is, for example, Altalhana, uh, Bombure, Chinggis Hani Maktar, and few others. So I would really suggest, uh, suggest you to check also her video if you want really the singing part because she's Mongolian. So, so definitely uh, her spelling is perfect, obviously. And she really put, she really made a great video. Uh, all her videos are super, super, super great. So I really invite you to go check her channel, check her playlist, uh, like and subscribe to, to see every videos that she can release. And she's sharing uh, folk songs. So that's also very interesting. Uh, that's another, I would say, uh, aspect of the culture that is not that spread. So definitely our work on that uh, is super, super, super awesome. So she shared the Chinggis Hani Maktar with the lyrics. She even made a translation into English of the lyrics of this Chinggis Hani Maktar. She made the spelling, she put the note, the score on the screen and all that. So it's like, a, she's a teacher, she's a professional teacher. So it's not like me, <laughs> uh, it's not freestyle, it's very structured um, and it's very uh, easy to understand and so on. So really check her YouTube, it's super, super awesome. So the playlist is called Sharing Mongol Folk Songs. I will put the link in the description for you to, to check and, and to explore. So if uh, you don't have much um, inf uh, much question about this Chinggis Hani Maktad, I would like to know if the person uh, who, yeah, uh, Ernesto Panchim Panpung, <laughs> that's super cool name. Uh, yes, her videos are in English. The dozen video are in English. So it's, uh, it's super, it's like a gold mine. Seriously, uh, she started, I, I, I'm not sure exactly when, but I think like uh, in the summer last year or something like that. Um, and I didn't know, actually. Uh, I just discovered her channel a few weeks back, like a week, like two weeks ago or something. I didn't know that she created that. Uh, so I was like, what? I, I thought that I had to talk about this uh, playlist in her YouTube channel because it's super, super, super awesome content for people that want uh, the lyrics, uh, to learn the lyrics, uh, to learn with the note and the score, um, and to learn folk songs because it's also very rare. That's a very rare resource on internet. So definitely check it out. I will put the link uh, when the live will be finished. So. I hope that uh, this kind of like how to play Chinggis Hani Maktar uh, was interesting. Again, that was not really conventional and that wasn't really, how to say, um, structured. That was more like a freestyle. And, and as I said, like kind of like a toolkit, give you advice and tips to understand how to play the different uh, little part, different little ornament and all that so i think that it might be maybe more interesting uh, than just following a structure so 
you can make a combo between this live for the murder part and the videos of Bouge, uh to for the lyrics and for more structured version. So it can be interesting to get the source, you know, from different uh, origin and different feelings and, and, and all that. So I think that now maybe it's been an hour and uh, hello, Max, how are you? So uh, I hope you're doing fine and great. So as it's been uh, an hour and 10, I think that maybe we can do a Urtindo practice. And while we do that, uh, if you have questions or anything, feel free to ask. So I will get back to the fourth uh, for the Urtindo practice. Okay, so I will just quickly, uh, uh, how to say, refresh your memory about how it works. So basically, uh, I play the Z on my own. Oh, I maybe I should uh, put the camera a little bit back so you can also see the bow. Yeah, that looks good. So basically, I I play the Z first, uh, then I will give you a note and then you can start to follow. You follow at your own rhythm. Uh, you can add decoration if you want or not. You can do strictly what I do or you can try to improvise and see what sounds good or not. Also, the bow is free. You don't have to follow what I do strictly. You just need to give a good volume and to avoid having uh, push, and, push and pull very often. Kind of try to keep the longest bow that you can. Uh, and I think uh, that's it. So we can get to it. Oh, we tune. <laughs> so lower string. string this one should give you something like that. Okay, so we can uh, get to it. Good luck and have fun, enjoy.
That was a little bit uh, maybe more complex than the previous Urtindo uh, practice that we saw um, previously. But we already made, I think, around five or oops, five or six uh, Urtindo practice. So I think that now you start to get the trick, you start to get the mood. So I think that I can just go crazy and do whatever I feel on the moment. Um, I think that maybe we'll go until the live number 20. Now it's the live number 16. Uh, and I think that starting the, the live number 20, we will see real Urtindo. So uh, maybe um, we will have to say, um, take, of course, first uh, kind of like easy melody. Uh, what I think is to maybe play the melody very slowly, um, two times, 
yeah, I think two times, and then play it four times the real way with the, the decoration and all that. So maybe two times kind of clean without too much crazy stuff and all that. And after four times, maybe uh, depending on how long is the, the, the melody, so it can kind of be a maybe 20 minute exercise or something like that, 15, 20, 25 minutes. Um, and then play it for real, maybe two times or four times or something like that. So I, I'm thinking to keep the kind of freestyle Urtindo until live 20 and live 20, we will get into a real Urtindo. That's uh, my idea. So I hope that you enjoy this idea and that you like it. Uh, so if you have any questions, any requests, any things that you want to say, feel free to share it now on the live uh, or a question about whatever the subject. It can be about the Merhor or maybe about uh, Mongolia in general. I see Bjorn uh, asking, is there any method to know how to tune to a recording of a singer? Ah, um, I will drink a little bit. So Bjorn, um, if, you, if, you, if you have just the voice um, of the singer without the murder or just the voice, that might be a little bit tricky to explain um, because it means that, yeah, I don't know how to say. For me, when I, um, I have the recording of only the voice of a singer, I try, I, I, I don't tune uh, the, the murder hole, uh, right away. I just try to follow it. Even if my murder hole is not tuned uh, how it should be for the singer, right? I just try to see where are the notes. And as I, I've been following Urtindo now for a little while, I can start to see the pattern, feel the pattern, where are the notes of, uh, that the singer is singing. And um, after that, I will kind of in identify, oh, this is, this is coming very often. So if this is in this position, it's going to be easier to play. Uh, then I just adjust the, the murder like It's very abstract <laughs> what I'm saying, but that's how I do it. As I have like zero knowledge of music, uh, I, I when I sing a note, I have no idea what note it is. Uh, I don't have absolute hearing or anything like that. So I do it a lot with my feelings. Um, so if there is no murder on the recording, once you will get... Um, the, the 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 mood of the urtindo and you will know few urtindo you will start to see the pattern uh, of the notes that comes very often and the the there is some position that are very comfortable uh while playing on the murder while following a singer and if it's like one tone higher or lower it becomes super annoying to to play on the murder so um, so you will gradually just feel, oh, this is very comfortable. Okay, I just go up a little bit and, and it's going to be perfect or go down a little bit and it's going to be perfect. It's actually how it was before because there is kind of two, three positions that are super comfortable to play on the murder uh, while following a singer. And when we get out of that, it becomes a little bit annoying. Uh, we, we don't have all the effects and all the comfort uh, to follow. So that's why in old time, in tradition, um, we would change the, the tuning for every single singer. Ah, this guy is as, um, uh, how we say, like low voice. So, okay, I go down. This person, this woman has a very high voice. So up, I, I take the, um, the, I would say, the tuning up. And when tuning wasn't enough, we would even change the position of the bridge. So to have a lower, so if I, if I show kind of like that, uh, we would change the position of this upper bridge. So to have a lower tuning, we would put the bridge up and to have a higher tuning, we would 
put the bridge uh, down. So yeah, that that that's kind of it. Um, if there is no murder hole on the recording, right? If there is a murder hole on the recording, that's very very easy because I I took the most complicated case first. Uh, if you have a murderer on the recording, that's very easy because usually in the beginning they will play the Z, so the empty strings. So you just put this Z uh, all over and over and over again, and you can tune on it. So if the murderer is already in the recording, that that's pretty easy. So I hope that it answer. Uh, it answers the the question, and yeah, Bjorn, you made me sweat. Uh, like say, uh, like he's saying Ernesto. <laughs> so, if you have any other question, uh, while you're thinking about new uh, question or what, so I will give you another information that I think is very worth uh, sharing. For those who are interested in Mongolian homi, uh, and by that I mean a real Mongolian homi. Unfortunately, I cannot show you because I, I'm I'm not really a homage. I'm not I'm not a homage. Um, I have like kind of like a partner, my my friend, and and um, we might start to do some things together. Uh, the Mongolian homage, the Mongol homage. So. Tsoktgiril, sorry, uh, is one of the best homage, Mongol homage I know, if not the best, um, is incredibly awesome. For those who are on Discord, I already put a lot of uh, his videos, uh, which are mind blowing, and is actually. Um, Usually he teach in Mongolia and in Inner Mongolia, but he wants to spread his knowledge more, uh, especially to Europe and to, to uh, the, the US, because most of what is being spread there is the Tuvan Home. Uh, so Tsotgerer is actually starting to give class online. Um, so if you are interested in the Mongolian homi, in the real Mongol homi, um, you can either ask me, um, maybe uh, how should I do that? Maybe I can put his, I will ask him if he's okay, uh, that I put his Facebook address in the description. If he's okay, I will put the, the, the Facebook, his Facebook address, uh, in the, in the description, uh, as Parker, Kazla Hung is asking, I don't think that he has um, a YouTube channel, but he got, there is a bunch of his videos on YouTube, which I actually, I could maybe put also in the, in the description here, so you can uh, check it out. He actually uh, joined the Discord community, so you can talk with him directly on Discord. Also, uh, if not, you can connect with him directly on Facebook. I think that he has a WhatsApp, uh, but I don't want to spread his information uh, straight into the live uh, before I would need to ask his permission. So if he's okay, I will put all his information in the description. If not, uh, you can join the Discord, get in touch with him directly, or you can get in touch with me and I will help uh, make, make the connection. Eventually, if you need some translation, I can also help with the translation from English to Mongolian uh, to Mongol and uh, from Mongol to English. So that's a very, very, very incredible uh, opportunity to learn with definitely one. He is a master. He's been uh, singing Komi for like, uh, I think, 30 years or, or 20. I, I don't know how old he, he is, but he's been singing forever. His dad is uh, Tsirindawa, which is also a big master of the, 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 the Mongol Homi. So definitely that's an opportunity that you need to take if you are interested in uh, the Mongol Homi. So that would also help, uh, I guess, even if um, you're more maybe in the Tuvan one, 
at least take maybe few lessons, like four or um, a dozen of lessons, just to, to, to get into the difference between uh, the Tuvan Home and the Mongol Home. That's very important, I think, for any any ones that are actually into the singing to to see the different version and also to have the hearing to make the difference between the different kind of overtone singing or home. So his name is Sokdir, uh, he's on Discord, he's on Facebook. I think he has a WhatsApp. Uh, I will see if I can put his information in the description, if not, join the discord is there there is a bunch of his video on discord um there is a lot of also of videos of him on youtube so i just wanted to give you a heads up about that because that's pretty crazy I, actually i took lesson with him uh for a while to be honest it was mostly for the cultural point of view and for my research if i could say that more than for the singing because uh, I'm not that good with the homie, but I'm actually thinking that maybe I should learn. <laughs> maybe I should get serious about the homie. I don't know. I will see that's for another uh, time. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. So, so yeah, I just wanted to share that. Uh, other than that, about the community, the old community, the Discord is growing. Uh, that's super, super cool. We almost had 300 person. Uh, the adventure started last year. It's going to be a year uh, next month. So um, we are almost 300 now of passionate. There is so many interesting person, many culture, many different kind of religion, many language. I mean, that's uh, this community, the old community on Discord is my life saving community kind of because it gives me so much energy, so much motivation. Um, everyone is so awesome there. The mood is so great. So definitely, if you're not there yet, you should be in the next five minutes, right? The link is uh, in the description. Uh, I Most of the, um, the person that are right now on the live are on the Discord. So it's super, super great community. I mean, I love everyone there. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that. So uh, also know that the book, <clears throat> sorry, know that the book is going pretty well. Uh, we are around 95% of the book. Unfortunately, my teacher is super crazy, awesomely busy with a lot of class and she is also in the countryside. So it's a little bit difficult. I'm a little bit stuck uh, with the book right now because the only part that is required is the Mongol Bichik, the Weirod Mongol Bichik version, which need to be proofread. Um, and as my teacher is in the countryside, that's a little bit complicated. So it's uh, more or less on a standby right now, but that's the only part. So it's super, super close to finish. I really want to, to, to give birth uh, to, that, uh, to that book. I'm super impatient. Also to give you an heads up about what I am kind of like doing right now, um, so there is the book I'm, I'm um, developing, I'm trying to develop the website a lot, uh, kind of to, to attract a little bit more person and to share more content. So I'm developing the blog that I have on my website. I try to change the, the theme and everything uh, so it would be quicker and also faster and easier to find information. I want to put, I will put uh, a lot of photography, photographs that I took in Mongolia in my different trip, kind of make a travel journal on the blog. So, so definitely now know that the website is becoming updated. Kind, I'm trying to update uh, regularly. So for now, I'm kind of going from 2012 when I started uh, my journey with Mongolian culture. So gradually I'm, I'm kind of putting on the website, I have like thousands, 
uh, at least hundreds of pictures that I never posted anywhere. I just went uh, in many places, but I never really took. Um, I, I mean, I took a lot of pictures, but I never really diffused or spread or released anything is, except for a few pictures on Instagram. But now I'm really putting a lot of all this content I, I took for like uh, almost like yeah seven years now. I really want to put everything on the blog to, to show you guys what I did, where I went give you uh, as much as information as I can with what I have and also gradually add uh, text translation. Uh, maybe there is some other things that are uh, on the on the talking thing like a Mongol, we wrote Mongol Bichi class lesson on show and a CD that is on the go and stuff like that. So I will not spread too much information now. I'm very enthusiastic to get back to, to the live now. So I'm just like teasing you a little bit with uh, what is going on. Also, the, the website is really uh, working pretty greatly. I'm very happy on how it looks now. And I hope that you enjoy also the, the refresh, even though it's close to what was before I think that it's way um I would say way faster and more comfortable now so so yeah I think that's it for uh today's live um we went through the Chinggis Hani Maktad a lot of a lot of details I hope that it was interesting for you and that it's been helpful for you to learn this Maktad this really really great Maktad also remember, uh, Budje is making videos about folk song, sharing Mongol folk songs. The playlist is on YouTube. The link, I will put it in the description. So we went through all that today. We did the Urtindo practice, which was super cool. I always enjoy that very well. And also, if you want to learn Mongol Romi, know that Sotgeret is teaching live. Uh, I think through WhatsApp or Skype or I, I'm not sure how, but he teach online so you can take class with him. Uh, you can get in touch with him on Discord, on Facebook, through me if you need some help with translation. So, so yeah. And as usual, no, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to be aware of all the videos and live uh, that are coming up. Also join the Discord community if you want to share information, if you want to learn more, if you want to discover different kind of folk culture uh, that's very open, or if you want just to be a spectator and see the content that is being shared, you can join the Discord. Also, the, the link of the community is in the description. And if you like the live, you can put a comment. That's also always very, very useful. And finally, if you like what I do, you can support by subscribing on my website financially. You can make donation. Uh, and if you want a Maruhur and you don't already have one, you can also order from me. I ship all around the world. So, so yeah, the, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and see you, I think, next week. May the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you. Bye-bye.